nothing left to do but to turn on the kill switch and see if this thing works. <clears throat> and stop and say a silent prayer. So here it is, the moment of truth. I'm gonna do this with the box open so that if anything, you know, blows up, I'll be able to see where the problem occurred maybe. Flipping the switch. Nothing happened. Not sure if that's good or bad. <gasps> Lights on. That is the heater uh, temperature. Internal lights on. And that is the fan temperature. Now the only thing that's going a little, oh, I haven't turned the button on yet. All right, let's turn this on. Hmm. All right, so far the only thing not working is the voltmeter. Maybe you have to hold it longer. Long press isn't doing it either. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to figure that out. So I'm gonna have to wait till daytime, some sunshine, to see if I hooked up the Anderson solar connectors properly. But I can check the 12 volt DC plugs here and here. Ah, one other thing I gotta see if it works. The uh, USB-C, let me get that off the tripod here. We got our USB-C and A connectors here on these power ports. Let's see if those, oh yeah. Those are working too. Well, we've got our AlphaCool cooler right here, so let's plug her in, see if she takes off. She's getting power, so let's uh, turn it on. She fired up. So when I'm not filming, I'll be able to monitor the current draw and all that kind of stuff in the Victron app. Uh, so the solar charge controller and the smart shunt are both from Victron. They communicate together and I just turned on the tracking. That ends up being okay, I guess. So the Victron Smart Shunt and the Victron Solar Controller actually communicate together. They kind of have their own little network and then they connect to the app over Bluetooth onto the phone. So I'll be able to monitor both the solar charger and all the solar power coming in and everything going out as well as everything in the entire system through the Smart Shunt. Pretty slick. I'm excited. So I kind of forgot the DC's functioning. What about the AC? The inverter has not turned on. And I'm a little nervous because that is the only main component that I haven't tested already. It may not even turn on. Let's find out. I don't even know where the switch is. Okay, just turned it on. It was loud. <laughs> I had to use a long screwdriver in order to reach the switch and turn it on because I couldn't get my hand down there. <laughs> this box is actually the absolute perfect size to work, just not be uh, very user friendly if you need to do any adjustments. If you're gonna do this, do better research on your box. So one of the biggest loads that the inverter is gonna see when it's down there at the shed is this charger for our 40 volt, six amp hour battery for the lawnmower. So I'm gonna plug it in and test it out. Comes on. Not sure if this battery is actually full. Let's see if it tries to take a charge. I think it's full. Here's another one. Well, I think they're both full. At least they're not getting an error. Let me try the smaller 18 volt one. All right, so this is just the 18 volt system. Charging. So I don't ever plan on using a heat gun you know, from here, but I need to load test this thing. So I've got a watt meter thingy here hooked up to a short extension cord because this won't fit the way I have the plug in the box. So let's see, it's a 1200 watt inverter. So let's see uh, if it works. So it's 506 watts. The inverter just kicked on. And this is pulling 1,035 watts. 
I, mean, I don't see any reason to run this until things die or anything like that. I don't need to know the upper limits of everything, so I'm just happy that it works. Like I said, I don't think we'll be running anything quite this heavy off of this system, so I am content. Oh wait, I should try the other outlet. Success there. Inverter kick back on again. So both outlets work. And here I've managed to hook up our two Bouge RV 100 watt bifacial solar panels that are going to be going on top of the shed. And I got it hooked into the solar power box. It's connected down here into the Anderson connector and everything is working perfect. And over here on the right, you can see is the display from the app for the solar charge controller. And it's showing that uh, we're getting some power in, but it is a sunny slash cloudy day and we get clouds moving in front of us every so often. Okay, you faithful few, what we have set up here on the front porch is kind of a real world testing scenario as if we were camping and had all this stuff out and ready to go. Rugged Mountain Mister is here to help me out to flip everything on. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get all this stuff running at the same time. So first up would be the interior and exterior lights. Then we would have the fan controller. This so we can monitor the temperature inside. Next we would plug in one of the coolers. One of the coolers is set on a refrigerator on both sides. That's the Alpacool. And the other one is set on uh, freezer on both sides. So go ahead and plug the other one in. There you go. Turn that on. So now both of those compressors are running. Oh yeah, got the voltmeter. And click that on. Looks good. All right, now turn on the inverter, which should give us power to run the fan and the bug zapper. So turn the fan all the way on to high. And now the bug zapper, plug that in. <laughs> bug zapper's turned on. And then lastly, I got a couple of items in here to charge up two battery banks. Whee! All right, so everything seems to be working good. So let's see what happens on the Smart Shunt app as we turn all these things on. And first up, the interior lights. Then some exterior lights. Next up, we will fire up the Alpacool. Yep, see the compressor kicked on there. Now let's kick on the Bodega. Yep, see the amps going up. We're up over seven now. Pulling 96 watts. Go ahead and start up the inverter. Then I'm going to plug in the bug zapper. Now let's kick on the fan on high. All right, we're up to 270 watts. 20 and a half amps. The last thing to turn on are the USB chargers. We got one coming out of the USB A and another is USB C. Okay, we're up over 300 watts, about 23 amps. And we could run it just like this for 12 hours. 11 and a half hours. All right, hasn't fully adjusted yet. Let's give it a minute. Still coming down. So it looks like it's going to bottom out around seven and a half hours and probably trickle down a little bit more. But we can run two coolers, one fan on high, and a bug zapper, charge up some battery banks, and it'll run it for about seven and a half hours. And that'll actually improve a little once the compressors shut off when the uh, coolers get themselves down to their set temperature. Well, you faithful few, this little test went pretty well. And there was one other test that I ran on both of these coolers running at the same time. 
I had the bodega down to zero in both compartments and the Alpacool just as a refrigerator at 32 degrees in both compartments. And our battery box here ran that for 48 hours and only used a little over half of the battery capacity. So I think we've done enough testing now to where we can take this thing camping and be confident that it's gonna work for us. So earlier in the video, we showed you the Bouge RV 100 watt solar panels at work. Now we got the Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt panels out. And uh, we're gonna charge this battery box back up with those panels and kind of show you what that looks like coming through the solar charging app. Well, while we're waiting for the sun to come back out here, just show you real quick the Solar Saga panels. Got the cords right here. Here's the Anderson connector right here. And we got one panel and the second one plugs in right here. So down here is our location where we'll charge it up. And you just plug it in down here like that. And you got one panel working for you. Then grab the other plug right here, put it in like so. And now you've got both panels charging up the battery. All right, looks like we got the sun back out for a little while. So let's see what kind of power we're getting in through the charge controller app. Okay, so let's open the Victron Connect app. It's already on the smart solar. Fetching some data and nothing's plugged in right now. So we got zero watts coming in. But go ahead and plug in just the one panel and we have got full sunshine. Not sure about our angle or how good it is. Okay, here it goes, we're ramping up. Just one 100 watt panel right now. We're getting 86 watts in. Now let's just go ahead and hook up the second panel. And we've jumped up to 153. One thing to be mindful of for sure with these panels is if you shade them even a little bit, your power input will drop quite a bit. So try and keep the shade off of the panels as much as possible. One other thing I was curious about is, are you able to charge this with both solar and wall power at the same time? So let's see what happens. Obviously got the solar power coming in down here through the Anderson connector. I'm gonna plug in our LifePo charger. Let's open up the box, get these alligator clips connected. And for this, you wanna connect your positive to your main battery output. And then if you wanna monitor the uh, current coming in, you have to attach your negative to the load side of the smart shunt. Then we'll plug that in there. And now we got some AC power coming in as well as our solar panels whenever the sun shines. And of course, this just helps to charge the batteries up a little faster. Then as we switch back, you can see we got 156 watts still coming in from the solar panels. But if we switch over to the shunt, we'll see we got 300 watts coming in and 22.34 amps coming in. So of that 300 watts, uh, obviously we saw 157, 150 of that was from the solar panels. The rest would be from the AC. We're gonna wrap it up here, you faithful view. I had another issue where the remote wasn't working for the inverter, just in case anybody's wondering out there. You have to have the inverter off and the remote switch off, plug it in. Then you can flip the remote on and it turned it on. So everything is functioning normally and there's just one more thing to show you before signing out. And it was something that uh, Brigham Young's sister brought up uh, in a conversation we had that uh, went something like this. Yeah, so I mean, I tried to think of everything. I mean, the, that switch up there does the interior lights. This one over here does the exterior lights. Those two other switches do the fan and the heater. Then there's the 12 volt sockets. I mean, even the shunt and the solar charge controller have Bluetooth. So. Bluetooth? Yeah. Does that mean there's Bluetooth speakers in here? So like you can play music? Speakers. <laughs>
Yeah, so I tried really hard to get some speakers that would fit in here, but all the ones I found are like the marine grade, waterproof kind. They're all too big to fit. I would love to stick them right here, but not only that, but then all the extra wiring that it would take to fit in here, I'm not sure that I could get that to work. So I went looking and found the next best thing. No, the other one. The next best thing. Found some wireless Bluetooth speakers. Well, before we wrap this series up, I had to pop in here one last time and show you two things that I've done to the box since I finished primary filming and gotten all the editing done on the previous videos. So let me show you what we did. So the first thing to show is I permanently mounted the AC charger within this compartment up here, right above where those puck lights were. And I've got a painted PVC pipe here that connects to the fan outlet. So this is able to vent the hot air from the charger right out of this hole here. So we just unplug this thing, get a little extension cord right into there, and then plug her in. So the cables are actually routed way down here, that red wire right there comes out from there and then attaches to the positive of this battery on this clip and then the negative is on the shunt right here on the load side. So now I do not need to open the box in order to charge up the batteries with AC power. Then the second thing I did was got another power inverter remote and permanently installed it here on this side of the box so that when I do uh, disconnect it from the shed and take it camping, I can still remotely turn on the inverter without opening the box. So that's wired right here. The wire comes out, goes under the charger pipe, underneath this red divider. There's a bunch of extra. I didn't feel like buying another crimping tool in order to cut this and put a fitting on it. So it's just wrapped up here and then it goes through another hole on this side down into the box. And what's good to know is with those inverter remotes, you can actually split them. So there's a plug that comes out of the inverter and then it goes into a adapter that turns, in, turns it into two plugs. So one of the plugs uh, comes up here to this power inverter remote and the other one goes over to this one that we showed you before. Okay, now let's go ahead and wrap this series up. Well, there it is, ye faithful few. I couldn't be happier with how this ended up turning out. And hey, I know this has been a long series with a couple videos way longer than we normally produce. So if you've stuck with us this far, super appreciate it and wanna thank you for that. If you have any questions about the build or anything that we used, be happy to give you an answer. Just leave a comment down below. And hey, I just wanna thank you all so much for watching. And you all have a great day.